So the, this is the Camp des Milles, and uh, this is a former tillery. It is one of the largest uh, industrial sites in the region since, since the end of the 19th century. And victim of the economic crisis of the 30s, it had to close in 1937. The government, the French government, asked for it at the declaration of war, and it becomes an internment and deportation camp from, from September 1939 to, uh, December, to uh, December 1942. Today, and since 2012, it is the only large uh, internment and deportation camp in France, still intact and open to the public. So actually what happened in that camp during the war? We can divide uh, what happened during the war in three periods. From September 1939 to June 1940, uh, it is an internment camp for enemy subjects. And actually, this is one of the paradox here, because the, um, the because the that, that was a camp entirely under French authority, the Third Republic first, and then the Vichy regime, and it is indeed the army of the Third Republic that interned here, Germans, at the beginning. But many internees were anti-Nazis, artists seeking refuge uh, in France, at the time well known as the father of human rights. For example, Max Ernst, Hans Bellmer, Lion Feuchtwenger. So that was the first uh, period. Then from July 1940 to July 1942, it was an internment and transit, transit camp for indiscriminate foreigners, artists, uh, intellectuals, Nobel Prizes, former member of the Brigadas Internacionales uh, in Spain, for example. Uh, it was, there are more than 38 nationalities in total, and there were 10,000 people interned there from the beginning till um, the end of the last part. And then uh, in August and September 2000, uh, no, not 2000, but 1942, sorry, um, the camp became a deportation camp, and more than 2,000 people were deported uh, to Auschwitz via Drancy, including more than 100 uh, children. After the war, uh, the tillery worked again as a tillery, and then uh, it closed, and since 1982, to 2012, 30 years of uh, pacific fight to remain that place and to create uh, a memorial site. So what is the structure inside the memorial? Um, it is divided in three parts. So the first one is the historical, historical area, then the remembrance area, and then the reflective section. In the historical area, um, you have the presentation of the history of the interwar period from the Treaty of Versailles uh, to the declaration of war, what we call the rise of perils, uh, the Vichy regime, and finally the Holocaust and the specific story of what happened uh, in the camp. The idea here is already to explain the key events or the indicators that are relevant into the genocidal process. Death of democracy, first discriminatory measures, scapegoats, arbitrary detentions, and so on. In this section, we also already show resistance acts of people, notably by art. Uh, here is the art space. And we, we have 400 uh, works were made there in the camp, like plays, uh, operas, paints, books, courses, uh, or conferences. There was a real uh, art resist, I mean, a, a real resistant place by art. Because a lot of artists were interned there uh, in the camp. After that historical part, we have the remembrance area. 
So here we show the places of internment as they were at the time of the camp. Of course, the, the, their places are ma ma marked by suffering. And yet, the men interned there were able to find the resources to recreate a social life as they could. This place, they named it themselves the catacomb. I don't know if you can read it uh, in the front of that space. So they named it the catacomb because of the Berlin cabaret uh, in Germany. And this oven, inactive during the war, served as a place for conference, recitals, small shows organized by the intern themselves. Then, the last part is the reflective area. This specific part is probably very uncommon into a memorial site. It is based on the thinking led many years ago. How could we here, as a memorial site, be, relevant, be a relevant link between the past and the present? We had that impression that this relevant link depends on the individual and collective ability to understand how the Holocaust happened and how similar human mechanism can again lead to the worst. But also the capacities that allow people to resist to such mechanism. Actually, uh, major points of analysis were drawn from the Holocaust historical process and could then be confirmed by the scientific analysis of the processes having led to other genocide or mass atrocities, like against Armenians, Roma, or Sinti, or Tutsi. So that's what we try to show in this specific part. Uh, in the reflective area, we try to present the, yeah, the scientific, multidisciplinary, and intergenocidal um, process in analysis. Actually, what we call the convergence approach has been notably developed through the UNESCO chair, Education for Citizenship, Human Sciences, and Convergence of Memories, that we chair uh, with the ex marseille University in France, and which is directed by uh, the, our president, the president of the Candemille Foundation, Alain Chorac. So this specific approach points out some individual factors, rejection of others, group effect, blind submission to authority, and it defines the common steps of the societal and individual processes which can possibly lead to such crimes from what we call a common societal breeding ground. This breeding ground represents the general condition of any society which, at various degrees, experiences permanent tensions between different situations, interests, and opinion. Those tensions are normally managed by the democratic system. This includes racism, antisemitism, xenophobia, fears. But when such tensions become exacerbated, namely to economic, social, moral, political crisis, a societal uh, spiral can be drawn in a three steps movement. In the first step, gr groups get organized to spread racist ideas and violence. These groups are allowed to prosper by the apathy of the rest of the population. They exploit crises, loss of references, individual or collective failures, and the need for scapegoats that difficult time generate. In the second steps, the main mom momentum is institutional. Measures are taken that restrict liberties, and extremists may even size power through force, provocation, or even election. A new legal system is developed, which enables the government to accelerate the process towards the world. Counterpowers, the justice systems, the media, NGOs, 
are first denounced, then restricted or even eliminated. Then the regime may turn authoritarian or even totalitarian. Racism, anti-Semitism and xenophobia are easy tools for powers that face difficulties. And even if elected, the power become illegitimate with respect of human rights, since every, everyone know that, know that since democracy is not just an election process. Finally, the third step comprises whether persecutions or even mass crimes that target not only the initial scapegoat groups, but include everyone. In order to share this knowledge, the Memorial Museum had summarized it in a diagram made with the keywords. I mentioned some of them, like uh, blind submission to authority, death of democracy, scapegoats, all those words, um, which define each step towards the genocide. Uh, so I will show you that diagram, but I also have a copy paper in English for um, everybody because I'm not sure you will be able to see something there. Oh, okay, so no. <laughs> but here is the breeding ground, the first step, second step, the last step that I just mentioned before. And this diagram is used during the educational workshops. Uh, we have approximately 400 uh, children per day. And during our training sessions with uh, police uh, officers, firefighters, NGO members, uh, civil servants, NGO members, company manager, we have a lot of uh, different kind of people coming for the training session. So yes, this is, the, this is our strategy for the transmission of memory because I'm part in this panel, so I'll, I'll talk about our strategy. We are not here only to pass down memory, but also to give keys and tools to think and analyze the present through numerous activities related to the prevention. So I will, I will just focus on the uh, first three activities that we have because, I mean, on, in my point of view, all the activities that the memorial site can do is uh, prevention activities. But I will focus on those one because I, I, I guess this is the, they are the most um, important for this conference. So the first one, uh, educational workshops. So I, as I just said, we had 400 uh, children per day. So they all, uh, all of them are doing uh, TAU a tour, but also a workshop. They can't just come for a visit. So we have uh, five different uh, workshops. Actually, we have more than five, but um, those are the, the more um, like finished or, I mean, they, they, they worked. <laughs> so the first one create in order to resist is to, the, the aim is to realize that resistance by art is important, as we had in the camp a lot of people, a uh, lot of artists. So from the painters, from Lemil camp, we tried to uh, discuss with the young children and explain that. Then we have another one, accomplice or resistant. So that one tried to analyze the individual behaviors that can lead to the worst. And as I said, blind submission to authority. So it, it is based on the psychological experiences that uh, are led in the, 90, the 20th century. Uh, the, another one is the authoritarian experience through the movie The Wave. I guess it is La Onda in Italian. I don't know if you know that movie, but here is more, uh, maybe, maybe it's not La Onda, but <laughs> it is, okay, great. La Onda, sorry. <laughs> And here the, the aim is more to explain and to discuss about how you build an authoritarian uh, regime with arguments, debates. So it's more for um, high school uh, kids. And a new one is rumors and conspiracy. So that one is focused on contemporary issues. 
so it's quite a new one. And in, in that one, the aim is to know the mechanism of diffusion of rumor and conspiracy theories, their consequences on the living together, and become aware of the issues related to the spread, so the role in the mechanisms leading to extremism, and of course to, to give or to discuss about appropriate tool that can um, help for to have a real critical thinking. And the last one is, I didn't, uh, actually I put the word, the name in English, but I'm not sure the, the book uh, had been translated, but that's a French book, uh, and the um, English translation, even if I don't know if the book uh, had been translated, is The Lamb Who Did Not Want to Be a Sheep. So that's for uh, elementary school children, and here it's from a reading. We discussed about the processes of collective resistance. Then we have the training session. So we, we actually we have a lot of training sessions because we have uh, also uh, customized training sessions, but those are the main training sessions. So one is uh, focus on the fight against extremism, racism, antisemitism, and discrimination. So it can be one day or two days. So if it's two days, then you become ambassador. And you can also build a project that can be certificate at the end with uh, French government, Condemil Foundation, and uh, French NGO. And it's a project, of course, uh, fighting discrimination, uh, racism, or antisemitism, or xenophobia. And then we have new uh, training session on prevention of rad radicalizations in the partnership with the Interministerial Committee for the Prevention of Delinquents and uh, Radicalization. And we also have a few training sessions on ethic and responsibility in the position of authority, because I said to you that we have a lot of um, police, uh, police officers and firefighters and civil servants, so they really deal with this kind of uh, issues. And, and we also have a new one um, for actors involved in the reception and uh, accompaniment of newcomers. The, the government asked us to try to think about one of uh, one training session for them. So it could be civil servants, but could could be also NGO members, and they are together in the room. So that that is very interesting to speak to talk about the law for uh, foreign people in France. And yeah, as I said, we all have also a customized uh, training session. And finally, I mean finally for today, but uh, we have um, research, we have research programs. So I don't have a lot of time to explain them now, but I, I will just say that it's focused on international approach and pluridisciplinary and uh, intergenocidal. As I say just before, we have in that reflective part um, different um, explanation on the genocide against Armenian, uh, Tutsi, and um, Roma and Sinti. And those research programs are based on the UNESCO chair, Education for uh, to Citizenship, Human Science, and Convergence of Memories, uh, which um, which is organized with uh, 13, for now 13 researchers all over the world. And what is very interesting in that uh, chair is that we try to organize an interna uh, international network of memorial sites, memory as a tool for education to citizenship. So Fosoli actually is a member of the, this international network and the uh, Kazan de Saint as well. And, I mean, other uh, international memorial sites. And what, what was very interesting last, last uh, conference we organized was to share discussion and to share experiences from academic perspective, but also from a memorial site perspective. That, that was very uh, inter yeah, interesting and probably efficient as well. Um, so I, I just would like to 
finish that presentation with uh, one sentence that I actually I wrote it uh, at the very very beginning of my PhD on um, the responsibility to prevent in international law but for me it's very very uh, a sentence that can apply to every single memorial site or academic or um, other person or sites that are focused on prevention and on the link with the present. So I try to say it both uh, in English and Italian, so please, the translator, don't translate, even if it's very uh, bad. So in English, it, actually, I didn't say that, but it's, a, it's an African proverb. When a tree grows, it is hurt. When the forest grows, not a sound. So in Italian, it could be Quando un alberto cade, albero, sorry, cade, lo sentiamo. Quando la foresta cresce, non c'è rumore. Thank you for your attention.